This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's uh, let's talk about the perception outside of the business for a minute, and just your perception when you see some of the Gaga of Saturday Night's main event. Do you think? Oh well, that's why that's why we're real wrestling. Our fans are in the arenas buying tickets, and we're not we're not doing the cartoon stuff that McMahon is doing. I mean, that's probably what everybody in the business was saying, stuff along those lines. Because they're trying to find a way to sort of justify how it's okay that their promotion isn't on NBC, right? Yeah, sure. You look for excuses and you look for any reason why, you know, okay, well, they're successful. Well, here's why they're successful in that. Yeah. Uh, Because they're doing that. We would never do that because we have real athletes and uh, we really beat the shit out of people with chairs. It's like, come on, man. It's... You can tell me, okay, our matches are still predetermined. You don't want to whisper that because then people would know, oh my God, their shit's not right either. Um, everybody was presenting the same product. They presented it in a different way. They presented it in a more entertaining way and made their stars larger than life. And I think that people gravitated toward the characters because they were larger than life. And it was new. It wasn't two old bald headed guys that, you know, thumbs in that were shooting and going out having a wrestling match in Iowa. Hey, great, man. They love that. Sometimes Uh, I love that. But when you got a variety of a bunch of bunch of stuff, then it's different. It's, it's no different than do you want to see, uh, an entire lucha card of just flip flopping and flying with very right. little psychology in Mexico. They prefer that. Sure. But I don't know that that sells in, uh, other parts of the world as well as it does in Mexico. What does a guy like Paul Bosch think of Saturday night's main event? Do you recall? Hated it. Really? Hated it. Would sit there with a notepad and make notes on it and would make notes about some of the outlandish things that Gene Okerlund would say. He loved to listen to Okerlund interviews and he would, uh, put his Betamax in and he would tape it. And for those of you that don't know what a Betamax (laughs) is, it was a precursor to the DVR, but it was a machine that you actually had to put tape in and you actually had to push play and record at the same time while the program that you wanted to record was on and make sure that your channels matched up and and what have you. Paul would go back and listen to Okerlund and listen to some of Vince's claims and, and commentary throughout the night and write them down. Oh, would you believe they said this? And, and just things like that. He would come in on a Monday morning and write it all out and, and just go nuts with pages of, I've got it. Um, some of it's hilarious what he would pick out of their promotion on a Saturday night's main event. It is pretty amazing when you think about how much the business was changing and how much of it was because of the WWE. I'm sure you watched it with, uh, through Bosch's eyes and you certainly heard his take, but you had to see the writing on the wall clearly because you would wind up working there eventually, but. Before you were part of the company, did, do you remember a special moment or match, uh, that happened on the Saturday night's main event that really stood out where you were like, oh shit, that was good. Or that was bad in a funny way. Well, I, the one thing that I always, because I, I think I probably already said it twice on, on this show is I always remembered the damn Halloween show and everybody dressed up in the costumes and the Bobby for apples and the chocolate and just how absurd that that was. And why is this on the show? But you also have to understand, I was a part of that demographic. I was 22 years old, 21, 22 years old when all that started. And looking at it through those eyes of, yes, I grew up on, by God, Dory Funk Jr., Wahoo McDaniel, Johnny Valentine, Jose Lothario, Gino Hernandez, and fucking all these badasses. This shit's real, God damn it! Yeah. Um, but the Halloween thing—you did mention it a few times—but I kept thinking, 
oh, it was this promo or that promo, but the Halloween thing that stood it's, it's out just, to that whole night was just great. The costumes and shit and, and, and the, uh, the theme, I guess, more than anything of how the shows would be themed and, and put together was, was fun. And, and it was interesting. So you would, you would have to sit there and watch and you would wait till the end. I couldn't tell you one match at all. It really stood out that, Oh my God, that was a great fucking match because you were just watching to see how everything was going to be forwarded um, and take it from there. Uh, the, the Saturday night's main event from, I think it was Phoenix or Tucson where Morocco, they crushed Hogan in the corner and it was the Bundy angle. Yeah. And those kind of things that was, that was fun stuff. Is there anything funnier than the iron sheet dressed up like uh, Batman? No, <laughs> no, it's great. It was absolutely. I mean, just a fucking Piper is Robin or whatever the hell he was. Yeah. I think he I was mean, that, that shit's hilarious. It is fun. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.